Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Circular Fashion Partnership online event on policy gaps and opportunities for circular fashion in Bangladesh. Before we introduce the first speaker, I would like to walk you through today's agenda. And please feel free to ask questions throughout the event using our chat function. So if we just go to the slide with the agenda. We'll start today with a word of welcome from the CEO of Global Fashion Agenda, Federica Marchioni. Following which, we'll have an opening address from their excellencies, the ambassador of ben Bangladesh to Denmark and the ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh. Then the Circular Fashion Partnership team will be presenting the Circular Fashion Partnership, giving an introduction to this unique project and the insights that we have learned. Then there is an address on industry resilience and the value of recycling by the president of BGMEA. Then we will have our keynote address from the Honorable State Minister Mohamud Shahir Alam of Foreign Affairs. We are humbled for his participation in today's event. After the opening words, we will have two panel conversations with six esteemed speakers per panel on the opportunities for the RMG sector in Bangladesh and also how we can navigate challenges to scale circularity. We'll end our two hour event with closing remarks from Schwapna Bomek, the head of country at, at Marks and Spencer's Bangladesh office. A sincere welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us today. And again, please feel free to ask questions that you have about the event over chat. We are recording this session and we'll make the recording also available afterwards. We'll now hand over to Federica Marchioni, the CEO of Global Fashion Agenda. Thank you for the introduction and the very well done organization for today's event. Uh, welcome on behalf of Global Fashion Agenda and uh, our partners, uh, Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Experts Association reverse resources and partnership for growth. It is an honor to open this meeting today to discuss policy gaps and opportunities for circular fashion in Bangladesh. And a great privilege to welcome so many reverend speakers to this meeting, including the Honorable State Minister, Mr. Mohamud Shariar Alum of Foreign Affairs in Bangladesh. My name is Federica Marchioni, and I'm the CEO of uh, the Global Fashion Agenda, a nonprofit organization on the mission to accelerate the fashion industry to a sustainable future. We set the global industry agenda for sustainability. We convene industry and key stakeholders, and we mobilize the industry to take bold action through our event, publication, impact programs, and innovation forum. Today, we will tackling about uh, talking about circularity, one of the five priorities of our fashion CEO agenda. At GFA, we believe that circular systems are needed to transform the industry, reduce environmental impacts, safeguard valuable resources, and distribute value fairly across people and communities. Back in 2017, GFA launched circularity commitments to encourage brands and retailers to set targets for circularity. 12.5% of the global industry joined us and significant progress was made, for instance, designing for circularity and implementing circular business models. These commitments uh, also helped us to understand barriers and opportunities for circular fashion. And I would like to share with you the three takeaways that brought us to the occasion today. Uh, to transition to a circular system, uh, we must collaborate throughout the whole industry uh, through a cross-sectorial approach we need to establish innovation in the countries where fashion is produced and we must scale recycle materials so that they become more competitive than their virgin counterparts. 
We therefore initiated the Circular Fashion Partnership in 2020, a project to facilitate collaboration between brands, manufacturers and recyclers, support the development of the recycling industry in Bangladesh and create a long-term scalable transition to a circular fashion system. My colleagues will further introduce this unique partnership to you and will share some of our first interesting findings about the extraordinary business potential for Bangladesh to become a leader in circular fashion, such as, for example, half billion US dollar of potential saving when recycling even just its 100% cotton waste. We will also be talking together about political barriers that we need to address as a global community to make such figures a reality. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all our distinguished project partners, BG, MEA, Reverse uh, Resources, and P4G, uh, our charter signatories, Bestseller, Cycle, OVS, and Tarasmina Apparels, uh, new affiliate, affiliates, partners such as Ivory Denison, Fashion for Good, McKinsey & Co., and of course, all of the other pioneers, brand, manufacturer, and recycle who have joined uh, the Circle of Fashion Partnership. To policymakers and the investor community, I would like to extend an invitation to join us in discussing how we can together remove barriers, unlock investment, and scale circular fashion in Bangladesh. It is my privilege to now introduce His Excellency Mr. Mohamed Alam Siddiqui, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Denmark, and Her Excellency Mrs. Winnie Astrup Pedersen, Ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh, for their opening address. Your Excellencies, handling over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon in Dhaka. Um, I'm not quite sure who's to start. Yes. Uh, let me uh, then start. Uh, I am Ambassador of Bangladesh to uh, Denmark, Allama Siddiqui. Uh, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, His Excellency Mr. Muhammad Shahriar Alam, my distinguished colleague, Danish Ambassador to Bangladesh, Ms. Winnie Peterson, distinguished Chief Executive Officer of Global Fashion Agenda, Ms. Frederica Marchioni, Excellencies, distinguished participants, Assalamu alaikum and a good afternoon to you all. At the outset, I would like to thank Circular Fashion Partnership for hosting this webinar and kick-starting the process. I would like to thank my colleagues at the GFA Global Fashion Agenda and must also make a mention that Bangladesh Embassy in Copenhagen and Danish Embassy in Dhaka have been quite instrumental behind this process. I am honored and privileged to represent my country as ambassador in Denmark. Bangladesh and Denmark have been enjoying 
friendly ties since the diplomatic relations began in February 1972. Our friendship is rooted in common values such as equal, equal, equity-based development of the society, fairness and justice, and sustainability of development. This year, we are celebrating our golden jubilee of independence, and I'm happy to share that my country, Bangladesh, has achieved remarkable economic and social progress in recent years under the dynamic leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, particularly in poverty eradication, education, health, women empowerment, food production, and also industrialization. Denmark has been successfully operating its green economy in combating climate change and by promoting green agenda. In fact, Denmark is the leading country in this sphere of activities in the world. Denmark's initiative to lead a new platform, Partnership for Green Growth and Global Goals 2030, in brief, P4G, to promote green economy and achieve SDG with focus on climate change, renewable energy, food and water security, and circular economy is highly commendable. It may be pertinent to mention here that the circular economy holds promises for achieving multiple SDGs, sustainable development goals, such as SDG six on energy, SDG eight on economic growth, SDG 11 on sustainable cities, SDG 12 on sustainable consumption, and production and SDG 13 on climate change. I believe circular fashion is the new black in the apparel industry and it is the future. Today we are gathered here to export the opportunities for circular fashion in Bangladesh and to kick off the process of creating a circular business model within a few years from now. Uh, we hope that Bangladesh with support of the international community will be a role model in this sphere also. Bangladesh mission in Copenhagen had meetings with the P4G gateways, as well as the drivers of this initiative. It will continuously nurture these relations and engagements, and it will do its bit to see the initiative come Let me also mention before closing my remarks that we have today uh, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs as the keynote speaker, and no one can better suit this position because of his great knowledge in the industry, his uh, uh, role in the policy making of the government of Bangladesh, and his uh, long term, long gained uh, uh, knowledge in diplomacy. So in him, we have a combination of many qualities, and we will be looking for receiving his statement and his guidance for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. So I will take over from my uh, dear colleague, uh, Ambassador of Bangladesh in Copenhagen, uh, Honorable State Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Bangladesh, and Mrs. Frederica Maccioni of Global Fashion Agenda and all distinguished guests, good afternoon. Thank you to Global Fashion Agenda for organizing the Circular Fashion Partnership and the seminar of today. I'm really pleased and honored to join such a distinguished group of speakers. Now, I come from the land of Hans Christian Andersen, the famous author of fairy tales. In fairy tales, people have to go through difficult ordeals to reach a happy ending. And that's what happened to Denmark. A hundred years ago, a small farmland in the north of Europe is now considered a green front runner. And more, with the strong back backing of Danish businesses, civil society, and not least the young generations, our government has set the ambitious, tar ambitious target of reducing uh, CO2 emissions by 70% by 2030. These goals are driving a dynamic and innovative business climate. Danish companies are at the forefront of going green and it has been really good for business. Clean energy, new technology and promising methods like circularity can benefit both countries 
and industries alike. And Denmark very warmly welcomes uh, countries like Bangladesh to join this journey because we are truly at a global brink of green industrial revolution. Now, as mentioned by my colleague, Denmark and Bangladesh will celebrate 50 years of partnership and diplomatic relations next year. Throughout the years, we have seen Bangladesh respond to global challenges, improve social indicators, increase digital infrastructures, and ultimately become a tremendous example for fast development in the world. Indeed, Bangladesh pursues its goals with determination. If we can combine Danish innovation and green solutions with Bangladeshi determination and entrepreneurship, we'll surely see a new era of green transformation. Now, the Circular Fashion Partnership is a P4G sponsored project. The P4G brings together nations, the private sector, and multiple actors in partnerships to transform climate change challenges into market opportunities. And I'm very proud that both Bangladesh and Denmark are partner countries of the P14. The, part, the fashion industry, one of the largest and most resource intensive industries is a powerful engine for global growth and development, not least in Bangladesh. And while Bangladesh already possesses a record number of green oil tea factories. Circularity can take these efforts even further, I'm convinced. The market demands it. In Denmark, more and more customers, especially the young generations, the customer base of the future, see sustainability as a precondition, not an option. This is also noticeable at the, at the European level and reflected in EU legislations uh, due to be implemented by 2025. The fact that cotton waste can now be recycled to create value and uh, create more jobs are real business opportunities. The Bangladeshi industry, as we heard, stands to save uh, half a billion dollars if it can recycle its cotton uh, and decrease imports. So the Circular Fashion Partnership offers avenues to explore textile, textile recycling while helping the Bangladeshi textile industry become, become even more competitive at the global stage. In a joint venture across the value chain from designers and brands to manufacturers and customers. So let me conclude by expressing our highest expectations to see the Circular Fashion Partnership advance green growth in Bangladesh. Having, been, having lived to see uh, the Danish green transition myself, I can safely say the opportunities are not just for fairy tales, but a, a reality quite within our grasp. So I wish you a fruitful and interesting seminar today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellencies, for giving such a remarkable opening statement. I would now like to go on and introduce the project to you. My name is Sandra Gonza, and together with my colleague, Nin Castle from Reverse Resources, we'll be sharing some of the insights from the project so far. I can go to the next slide. So before I go into the Circular Fashion Partnership, let me start off by setting a baseline and explaining what circularity is. The traditional fashion system is, a linear, is linear, meaning we take materials, make them into products and dispose of them after use. The Circular Fashion System is a closed loop system that keeps these materials in the fashion value cycle. This is only possible if we enable recycling and reuse of waste textiles at scale. Waste, I say to you in quotes, because we need to change this mindset around waste, which is not in fact waste, but actually a new resource. 
the Circle of Fashion Partnership has the aim to achieve a long-term scalable transition towards Circle of Fashion systems. And we do this through two work streams. Firstly, we start off by looking at capturing and directing post-production waste back into the waste, back into new fashion products. And secondly, we look at, we, we did a dead stock study in which we tried to look at, at solutions for the dead stock pileup resulting from the COVID-19 crisis. We do this together with all our different partners and collaborate amongst different um, affiliate partners, as you can see on the slide there. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. For the circular fashion uh, waste business model, we do this in two stages. First, we started off with the tracing and capturing of waste system, doing this together with the reverse resources platform and at factories setting up segregation gathering the waste and then in the second stage of the of the of the business model we're really exploring the circulating of this waste back into the value chain working with different recycling solutions rerouting this waste back into the solutions and eventually working together with brands um, to hopefully make new fashion products from the waste recycled waste if we can go to the, to the next slide and these are some of the partners, some of the brands and participants that have joined us together for the partnership in this year. Um, we have announced a few more brands. We have 20 brands now. We have about 17 recyclers that have joined us and many, many manufacturers within Bangladesh that are onboarded throughout the year. I would now like to hand over to my colleague, Min who will go a little bit more into explaining how we've done so far. Hello and good afternoon. As Sandra mentioned, the project is structured into two stages. <clears throat> the stage one kicked off at the very end of last year when our first brand partners, Bestseller and OVS started onboarding a select group of manufacturers. Since then, we have carried out 62 training sessions on improved handling, segregation and labeling of textile waste. So far, 13 of the 20 brands in the partnership have started onboarding their factories, and we have already 24 factory, factories segregating and shipping their waste to the project's recycling partners, with many more expected to start in the coming months. This graph shows the progress of the project so far. The mid blue color shows how much cutting waste was segregated and has moved out of the factories. The dark blue color shows how much was left in the factory's inventories at the end of each month. And here you can see an upward trend of factories being onboarded and the volume of waste segregating also increasing. The exception to this trend is May's data, which was greatly affected due to the coronavirus lockdowns, Ramadan and Eid holidays. However, here we are only halfway through June and we are again making great progress and very much expect to make a good jump forward this month. Despite the current situation we find ourselves in and the real challenges the industry is facing navigating a global pandemic, so far 487 tonnes of waste has been segregated and entered into the Verse Resources platform. The shaded graph shows that out of the 487 tonnes, over 179 tonnes has been traced to recyclers in the partnership. We expect the percentage waste traced to increase alongside the volumes and as, as efficiencies in the matchmaking process can be achieved. However, some of the factories in the partnership are also using the reverse resources inventory tool and inputting more of their textile waste to use as part of their Higgs waste reporting module to help improve their Higgs score. Next slide. So we have made great progress. We have established segregation and tracing of textile waste. And this traceability is the key to scaling circular supply chains and to support emerging recycling technologies to source socially and chemically compliant feedstock. We are at the very beginning of a huge shift towards circularity with an expected 500 times growth in fiber to fiber recycling in the next five years. However, globally, there is a massive lack of data on textile waste flows. And this is required to support the emerging and scaling recycling technologies and, to and for companies to make investments in this area. So as part of the Circular Fashion Partnership, 
Reverse Resources carried out an in-depth analysis of post-production textile waste in Bangladesh. Using UN Comtrade data, we can estimate that around 305,000 tons of spinning waste is generated every year. Around 124,000 tons of knit and weaving mill waste is produced and 453,000 tons of RMG waste, which includes cutting waste, cut panels and sewing, etc. Currently, the majority of these wastes flow into low value use cases or are often exported for recycling and valorization in other countries. As a, current, as a country so reliant on fiber import, these waste streams could actually serve as a huge fiber resource for Bangladesh. With improved and new recycling technologies that are already available today, the exportation of highly valuable cotton and cotton rich waste from Bangladesh represents a huge system loss for the country. Using the Circular Fashion Partnerships brands productions data as a reference point, point we were also able to create estimations, not only in the volumes and types of textile waste, but also broken down by composition. Our analysis shows that around 250,000 tons of the mill and RMG waste is in fact 100% cotton. And according to the Reverse Resources pricing structure, this waste is worth around 100 million for factories producing cotton-based products. In 2019, Bangladesh imported around 106 million tons of cotton staple fiber. If just the 100% cotton, not even taking into account all the cotton elastane and cotton poly blends, if just the 100% cotton waste was recycled locally, you could reduce the import of cotton fibers by 15%. And as, as mentioned previously, this would save half a billion US dollars in imports. This fiber breakdown by composition is fundamental for companies to map out the types and capacities of future recycling plants. And this full analysis we've made publicly available as part of the Circular Fashion Partnerships feasibility study on textile recycling in Bangladesh. Bangladesh has arguably the most recyclable waste of any apparel producing country. All of the emerging recycling technologies are looking at Bangladesh as potential location for future recycling plants because your waste is typically cotton rich and very standardized. It is exactly the type of waste today's active recyclers are looking for. So there is a huge opportunity for Bangladesh to gain a competitive advantage over other countries to diversify away from low cost to sustainable value added products. Recapturizing, reca recapturing and valorizing textile waste within Bangladesh could become an economic and environmental success story. Next slide. However great the opportunities, there are also significant challenges to overcome. Informal control over waste management by local interests is a huge market barrier to the traceable and compliant supply of textile waste that recyclers and brands need. Export processing zones limit the selling of waste materials to the local market. Utilization declaration sets official limits to waste generation, waste prices and related taxations. It is also very common for cotton waste to be incinerated for energy. And there is no current limit to incineration and no viable renewable alternative fuel source. And there is limited awareness among policy development. However, we very much hope that we can begin to discuss these complex and important topics in today's panel discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. If we can go to the next slide, thank you. Um, so as you can see from the timeline and where we stand within the project, today we're really kicking off the policy discussion but throughout the next six months, we hope to continue with different stakeholder meetings, followed by a policy roundtable, hopefully in Bangladesh towards the end of August, maybe beginning of September, with a video documentation of the different activities that have been going on in Bangladesh, the opportunities and the potential that exists around recycling. And in October, we really hope to facilitate an investor meeting during the CFS Plus event on October 7th, where we will be discussing financing for scaling these recycling capabilities within Bangladesh. And finally, towards the end of the year, we will be publishing 
the circularity playbook in which we share all the learnings from the project so far, including a policy brief, which will include the recommendations for the policy changes or the policy needs for scaling recycling, all launched in a closing event in December. I can go to the next slide. And finally, without further ado, I would like to invite the president of the Bangladesh Garment and Manufacturing Export Association, Mr. Farooq Hassan, who will share an address on the resilience and value of recycling. Thank you. Honorable State Minister, Mr. Mohammad Sharia Alam, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bangladesh, His Excellency, Mr. Alama Siddiqui, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Denmark, His Excellency, Winnie Peterson, Ambassador of Bangladesh, uh, Denmark to Bangladesh, Distinguished Ms. Federica Marshani, CEO, Global Fashion Agenda, Distinguished Panelists and Audience, Good afternoon and good morning to you all from the different time zone. From Circular Fashion Partnership and on behalf of the BGMA, I would like to welcome you all to this virtual event of Circular Fashion Partnership titled Policy Gap and Opportunities for Circular Fashion in Bangladesh. This weekend's presence, Bangladesh is the second largest apparel exporting country in the world and our economy is heavily dependent on this industry. 84% of our overall export earnings are generated from this particular sector. It employs around 4 million workers, mainly women for, from rural areas. We are facing difficult times due to COVID pandemic. Around $3 billion worth of orders were either canceled or put on hold. Around 15 fashion brand sourcing from mass sort of bankruptcy protection, which created a huge pressure on the manufacturer coupled with the impact of discount and declining demand. Thanks to the timely stimulus provided by the government of Prime Minister Sheikh Hashina, the livelihood of our workers were saved. But we are still striving to build back better. The global fashion industry historically follows the linear model of business that is tech, make, dispose. But we cannot afford to continue on this linear model. Circular economy can build a pathway for greater environmental sustainability coupled with economic growth. It is what we call closing the loop. The global apparel industry is accounting for 10% of global carbon emission, 20% total industrial water pollution, and 4% of the world waste each other each year. According to the report published by the Global Fashion Agenda and McKinsey and Company, widespread adoption of circular economy in the apparel industry would reduce 10% of the apparel industry's GHG emission. In 2019, the European Environmental Agency issued Textiles in Europe Circular Economy, and textile was one of the seven product value chain targeted in the EU's, EU's CE action plan release in 2020. Major European brands and retailers are also making strides in this initiative to transform textile economy to circular. A good number of strategic brands sourcing from Bangladesh, notably H&M and Inditex have pledged to source 100% recycle or other sustainable source material by 30 30, uh, 2030. The transformation of the global apparel industry from linear to circular is part of the next techno economic paradigm shift within global business landscape. Bangladesh is one of the largest producer of textile scrap in the world, around 400,000 tons of pre-consumer textile waste is produced annually, of which only 5% is being recycle locally. Instead, through the partnership with P4G, we are working to build a circular model in Bangladesh by developing domestic recycling facilities, technologies, and expertise. 
We appreciate the collaboration of P4G in the circular fashion partnership being implemented by the global fashion agenda, BGMEA and reserve resources. The partnership is mobilizing 12 brands, 15 recyclers and 85 manufacturers. To increase the use of recycled fibers in textile, I sincerely thank all the partners. The particular, this particular project created the stepping stone for Bangladesh RMG industry towards the journey of closing the loop. The culture of and customs in Bangladesh are far different from our main market, the EU or the US. So it is very important for us to develop customized local eco system of circularity. We look forward to take, for, to take forward the circular fashion partnership in the future to a localized platform and develop the capacity of manufacturers, recyclers, and waste handlers to domestically close the loop. We are also looking forward to post-consumer waste recycling, and we need strong collaboration from the P4G and April brand to do so. Sustainability is one of the core areas of concern for the BGMA. We have already made some great stride forward. Bangladesh has the highest number of LEEDs certified green factories in the world. We have now 144 LEED green factories, of which 41 are platinum, 89 gold. And for this outstanding achievement, BGMA have received 2021 Leadership Award from USGBC, United States Green Building Council as the first trade association of the world in just in last uh, 10th of June. BGMA signed the UNFCCC Fashion Industry Charter for Climate Action to reduce GHG's emission by 30% by 2030. Recently, 47 BGMA member factories published SDGs report partnering UNDP and Bangladesh government. So altogether, a positive momentum has been created. Achievement in circular economy is very important for SDGs 12, which are important for Bangladesh government as well. To foster economy, circular economy in Bangladesh, we need, we need a conducive policy environment, if not for all the sector being the most potential sector a circular policy for the RNG and textile industry would be very helpful. I request the policymakers come forward to help the industry in this regard. Their presence, we are interested about circular economy, but we have reservation. One of the principles of our economy is keeping product and material in use. But the RNG industry in countries like ours flourish based on the fast fashion culture. Therefore, while we are moving towards a circular economy, we have to be very cautious about the economic impact on the manufacturers and need to study how we can we up, offset the negative impact through a market-based solution. While we move towards a circular economy, the skill and efficiencies of our industries have to continue to improve in order to competitive, competitive in the global marketplace. I wish all uh, success on today's event. Thank you. Have a good day, stay healthy and safe. Thank you, Mr. Farooq, for such an inspiring and positive call to action. And now, without further ado, I would like to invite our keynote speaker, the Honorable State Minister, Mr. Mahmoud Shahrir Alam of Foreign Affairs. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's my true pleasure to join this uh, this very noble uh, initiative. I must say, uh, uh, Federica, uh, CEO, uh, Global uh, Fashion Agenda, uh, Excellency Ambassadors uh, of uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Winnie Peterson, and uh, our own Allama Siddiqui, uh, Farooq Bhai, newly elected uh, President of uh, BGMEA. I haven't had the opportunity to congratulate him in person. So please uh, accept my apology. And uh, I have a lot of witnesses here that I'm congratulating you. And uh, I promise that we'll be working together to make the industry even stronger, uh, further, uh, better. 
Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to, to Neen and Sanja for the excellent presentations that you have made. Uh, and uh, I must say that uh, being a board member of P4G, uh, I feel proud that uh, uh, the leading industry of Bangladesh is now engaged and uh, working uh, hand in hand uh, for a better uh, climate and better future uh, and leading by example for the industries in the world. Uh, I thank the Circular Fashion Partnership uh, and the co-hosts uh, uh, for inviting me uh, to this webinar. Uh, I sincerely appreciate uh, 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 Danish Embassy here in Bangladesh and Bangladesh Embassy in Copenhagen uh, for joining hands. And uh, this is indeed a very good example uh, of building uh, synergy around issues of our mutual interest. And as indicated uh, by the Ambassador of Denmark that uh, we are approaching 50th year of our uh, cooperation and uh, we can't uh, ask or look for a better opportunity uh, uh, than this uh, to celebrate our uh, uh, or rather start celebrating uh, the 50th anniversary of our relationship and this year uh, in particular uh, is a confluence uh, of a number of significant uh, uh, events in Bangladesh uh, we are celebrating uh, golden jubilee uh, of uh, of our independence uh, and the birth centenary of the father of the nation, uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, uh, who's, who dreamt uh, th throughout his life uh, to build a Shonar Bangla. Uh, that's a Bangla word, uh, but uh, in translation, it's golden bangle. Now, golden also means green. Uh, that means a better, prosperous, healthy, uh, cleaner uh, nation and society. Uh, we have received uh, this year also, as I said, this is the year of uh, a confluence of a number of significant events. Uh, we have received a recommendation from United Nations, uh, 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 from the Committee of uh, Development Policy about our graduation uh, from uh, uh, LDC category to, to mid-income category. Uh, as we are all battling um, uh, with the rest of the world as well, the adverse fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, while we are also waiting uh, for uh, the uh, upcoming COP26 with renewed enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, prepared our, our national uh, 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 commitments uh, uh, that will be announced uh, very shortly. Uh, and uh, keeping climate uh, and environment uh, in the center of, of that particular policy. Uh, now, uh, I, I was wondering at the beginning that, uh, you know, these initiatives requires uh, customers participations, uh, retailers participation, and I see there's a very rich number of uh, retailers who are already uh, committed and involved, uh, and a number of major manufacturers in Bangladesh uh, are already on board. Uh, so I have absolutely no doubt that this will be a, a fantastic project and this will as as uh, you know, probably Nino Sandra went on to say that Bangladesh produces uh, uh, are the, the marketplace for the largest recycling, uh, with largest recycling capacity. Uh, and we will surely lead by example, uh, and we will know that hopefully uh, to some extent by uh, end of the year when there is a closing report uh, event uh, in December. But uh, I'm sure this is, uh, you know, not we are aiming for a closure of the project, but it's, this will be the first phase, uh, an eye opener uh, for everyone. And uh, today's event, I, I saw the topic suggest that we talk about the policy and uh, uh, policy gap and opportunities. And, you know, I only see opportunities. And I think uh, uh, we, we can fill you in uh, with information that government encourages uh, uh, these uh, initiatives. And there are uh, uh, special tax debates and provisions made uh, in recent times, not this year in particular, or three years ago, uh, for manufacturers who are going greener. Uh, and also, uh, as you are aware, or if I may humbly remind, may politely remind some of you that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina being the chair of uh, Climate Vulnerable Forum uh, is leading, truly leading her country by example. When a couple of years ago, uh, world, uh, you know, came to a standstill in terms of uh, delivering their commitment uh, after certain COPs and failed to raise that hundred billion dollar for the countries who needed it most, uh, we, we, she, she didn't sit quite. Uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina went on to uh, create her own fund for the government of Bangladesh, and since then we have spent uh, a couple of billion dollars already uh, in mitigation and adaptation. 
and uh, we we are also investing in industries as a, as a government the new zones that are being built uh, for the industrial uh, expansions or relocations a government is ensuring that uh, those comes with central etp plants and you know central waste uh, dis, uh, disposal system and also uh, sustainable uh, electricity and power productions uh, so you know there are obviously uh, still i would say that listen uh, listen that uh, we need to learn and we will uh, uh, take uh, any uh, suggestions and recommendations by uh, circular fashion partnership uh, project uh, to to adopt and fine tune uh, our policies uh, and as a, as a as a member of the government i can promise to the industry stakeholders here uh, bgmea and the partners uh, in Denmark and throughout the world, uh, especially uh, all the brands that uh, recommendations that you make. And if, they, if, if you find any policy hindrances, uh, we are we will be happy to address those issues to pave the way uh, for a better implementation of uh, such initiative. And uh, this, is, as I said, this is probably the first one, but I'm sure many other parties, individuals, uh, brands, uh, businesses, countries will come forward and uh, follow the suit. Uh, but uh, from my own personal experience, uh, I would uh, request uh, the, uh, the partnership to try and address one particular issue is that uh, of uh, that we need to create uh, customers, the end customer awareness. I mean, obviously we have retailers. I saw, as I said, a very rich list of retailers here, but it's very important that uh, we try and educate uh, and uh, aware uh, the ultimate retailers, uh, customers, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, they are the one who is at the end of the day going to buy the product. And uh, one uh, I I had to mention, and I'm sure this will not be an example, but a couple of years ago, I remember when I was active in business and I left uh, in 2006 or seven. Uh, prior to that, uh, um, fair trade uh, was the buzzword and uh, millions of dollars were invested and it was aiming to uh, lift uplift the livelihood and the living standard of the cotton growers uh, at the farmers level at the workers level in those cotton fields uh, whether that be in india or pakistan or you know in the west but uh, that failed because the little premium uh, that was required to accommodate the extra cost of the cotton that was translated into yarn and fabric and garment eventually. Uh, the customers were not prepared to pay extra 20 pence or 20 cents uh, uh, for every t-shirt or 40, 50 cents for a pair of jeans. And uh, that failed. Uh, the order sizes reached to a million when I was active in business, but it went down to none uh, in just a couple of years. So I'm not sure how uh, uh, costly the recycling would be, whether recycling of a waste yarn from a cotton waste uh, t-shirts or overruns, um, whether the per kilo yarn cost would be less than the conventional or fresh uh, uh, produced uh, yarns. So pricing and if there is a premium uh, uh, required in the pricing model, it's very important uh, to so that uh, we all don't get discouraged by the previous experiences. Uh, so funding or subsidizing um, or people who are prepared to pay a little extra if uh, cost of manufacturing recycling product is a little higher, whether that be five or 10%. This is something I think, I think the forum needs to address, but I'm sure this is, uh, this is the way forward. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm a little hesitant, but I'll go on and share this. Uh, you know, my son, who is completing his studies abroad, uh, was after me for last uh, couple of weeks uh, because he's trying to frame his mind what he's going to do after uh, he graduates. And uh, you know, uh, he's pursuing his studies in a, in a country, North America, and uh, he was inquiring a lot. And I, I couldn't answer my current engagement and kind of detachment from the business for the last couple of years. But uh, you know, uh, this uh, particular meeting is uh, quite enlightening for me as well, and I can relate the aspiration of new generations. Uh, so uh, you know, who truly um, uh, wants to see a, a better world, and uh, nothing better uh, uh, can, uh, can we, we can expect than this circular fashion partnership for the industries and for the environment and for the world. And 
as I said, uh, this project can very well lead by example in future. So I wish the initiative well. I'm grateful uh, for selecting uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, to do this uh, uh, project. Uh, and uh, this also uh, uh, an example uh, that uh, we, we listen, we believe in partnership uh, and we accommodate and try and accommodate uh, that is uh, better for humankind uh, and for global good. So I wish all of you well, uh, stay safe. Thank you very much. Jai Bangla, Jai Bangla. Honorable State Minister, on behalf of the whole team at the Circular Fashion Partnership and our representative organizations, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude for your time and contribution today. Um, it's really with your presence and the express sentiment that you shared that you're already contributing to our partnership objectives and we look forward to sharing more opportunities and of course results with you as we proceed in the project. So thank you very much. So dear audience, my name is Holly Syrett. I am the Senior Sustainability Manager at Global Fashion Agenda. We'll now be transitioning to the two panels of today's event, and I'm honored to be co-hosting together with my colleague, Monoa Hossein, who is the Joint Secretary, Secretary for Research, Development and Trade Information and the Head of Sustainability at BGMEA. Monoa and I will be alternating our questions to the revered panelists and ensuring we hear all, uh, all perspectives from our panelists in the short time we have. So thank you in advance for understanding that we may need to intersect so we can have um, uh, uh, hear from all of our revered panelists. I'd now like to um, introduce these uh, amazing speakers to you. Um, so we have Helena Smiths, Chief Sustainability Officer at Recover, a recycler. Iria Muzo Leston, the Head of Circularity and Sustainability Public Affairs at Inditex, global fashion brand with several brands. Fayaz Mashid Kazi, the Director General for West Europe and the European Union, Union at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Bangladesh. Mustafa Udin, Managing Director of Denim Expert Manufacturing. Mosina Yasmin, Senior Executive Member, International Investment Promotion for the Bangladesh Investment and Development Authority. And last but definitely not least, Samira Saidi, who's an Investment Advisor at the Good Fashion Fund. Great welcome to all of our panelists. And we'd like to kick off with our manufacturer representative. So Mustafa Udin, I have a question for you. Could you help us understand what it would take for your company to partake in circular fashion systems? And if you believe a cross-sectorial approach is needed to do so. Hello. Hi, what's up? Yeah, can you hear me? Super. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I think at that current event of our uh, uh, circular fashion partnership is on the pre-consumer uh, uh, waste. And um, I think that uh, in, in our apparel production process, pre-consumer waste carry eight to nine percent of the total uh, garments. But if we consider about other things like around uh, 80 to 90 percent is the post-consumer waste. And uh, I think the future is like that in Bangladesh, we need to establish a recycling plant. Our partners, our brands and manufacturers, uh, they can collect the uh, garments from consumers in Europe and USA, and then they can send it to Bangladesh. We can have a recycling plant, make the recycling through this plant fiber. And through this fiber, we can make again fabrics and we can make the garments and send to that. And that will be the real close the loop. And, and I, I, this is what I want to see in this project. Super, so if I understand you want to extend beyond post-production waste to also look at recollecting garments um, that have been used by consumers, um, that would really expand the scope of what we're working on today. And perhaps 
how do you see um, as a manufacturer, what could your role be within that post-production or post-consumer circular system? See, uh, at this moment, we have a couple of policy barriers. One of the policy barriers is like, if we wanted to uh, import the secondhand clause, it's not allowed in Bangladesh. And that have to be changed. If it's not changed, how, how our brands and retailer will bring this cross over here and we do the recycling. So we need a serious policy changes in that particular area. And our honorable minister, Mr. Shadi Aram already said that he will do all kind of necessary help to make this project success and happen. So I, I think that this is one of the barrier we are having in this particular project and uh, it have to be addressed and it have to be solved. Super, thank you. And I think it's interesting that we look at the opportunities and how do we address those barriers indeed. So I'd like to hand over um, to my colleague, Monawa, for the next question. Thank you, Holly, and uh, very good afternoon, very good morning from uh, people from different zones. Uh, my name is Mohamed Monawar Hussain, and I'm working in the Bangladesh Government Manufacturers and Exporters Association, PGMEA, and we are also a partner of this particular initiative. So I would like to ask a question to a very important panelist today, uh, Iria. You were representing one of the very important strategic brand for Bangladesh, which is Inditex, and you have been a true partner for the development of this particular sector in Bangladesh. So I have seen that Inditex have a strategic target to, you know, uh, going to sustainable uh, fiber mixing by 2030, and you want to ensure that all your uh, fibers are sustainable. So how you see how and why you went to scaling up circularity and recycling in Bangladesh? Can you please enlighten us about this? Apologies, Iria, you are not yet unmuted. Um, yeah, please unmute yeah. yourself. Apologies. Um, is it okay right now? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. So first of all, thank you for having us today. We are very, very honored to participate here with such distinguished personalities and panelists. So um, as, as you mentioned, now we believe that the future of our sector is a, a circular, circular textile systems where products are made uh, to last from safe recycle and sustainable source input that can be recyclated multiple times. And this project to us brings a good opportunity for, for really Bangladesh to strength um, to strengthen his in, in its industrial capability and to really lead the transition to a circular and sustainable economy. No? What we think is that uh, if we really uh, are able to develop this circular economy model within Bangladesh, uh, we, we can't reduce the dependencies of, or virgin cotton inputs and uh, really improve Bangladesh uh, competitiveness and, and create uh, job opportunities as a pioneer for textile recycling. So, uh, for example, at Inidex, we try to integrate the circular economy in all of our activities and operations, from the efficiency of our offices to our products, logistics, and point of sale management. And in this sense, among other objectives, we have committed that all of our products will be 100% produced with sustainable cotton, linen, or polyester in 2025, and all, even with sustainable viscose in, already in 2023. So if we bear that in mind, let me point out that Bangladesh is one of our 12 clusters of productions, where we have a local office and a fully dedicated team serving to our eight brands locally. This country is the second biggest clothing exporting country worldwide and is key for circular future of textiles industry. Over there, we work with uh, more than 118 suppliers and more than 415 factories. Uh, that represent a collective workforce of, of more than 800,000 employees. So we strongly believe that we have to work all together to uh, um, develop the uh, industrial uh, recycling capabilities. And now you have quite a strong industrial layer of, of spinners in the country working. 
And uh, the local textile waste is typically cotton rich. And as Anin was mentioning before, is exactly the type of waste that today active recyclers are looking for. So investing and developing local industrial threading capacities and fostering university textile education on recycling could represent a huge opportunity to reduce cotton import dependence competitiveness by developing worldwide unique recycling drawings that are the ones that we are demanding from, from the part of the brands. Thank you, Ilya, for your nice and eloquent presentation. We also, from, from the manufacturers, I can say that definitely our manufacturers will be strategically collaborating with Inditex and try to fulfill your pledges to, you know, sourcing 100% sustainable fiber in the days to come. Thanks. Now I would like to hand over to my co-host, uh, uh, Holly. Holly. Thank you. And I think areas um, talking about the scale of the work that you're doing and this real need for more recycled materials ties really well into our um, next panelist, Helena Smits, who's the uh, CSO of Recover. Um, Helena, could you tell us a little bit more about what Recover's doing and what, what opportunities you see in Bangladesh? Yes, of course, I would be happy to. And first of all, also, thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of this panel today. Um, just to echo area, I think that we also really truly believe that the future is circular um, and Recover has been recycling uh, textile waste for over 70 years. So it's something that's also in our core DNA to do. Um, but to do this, we need to, well, to achieve circular fashion for all, which is the vision that we have for, for the industry is we need to do this at scale. Um, we cannot just be, be one factory and, and we need to collaborate. Um, we need to be able to, to serve the mass market and we really feel that Bangladesh is a great hub to be able to do that because um, we are currently establishing our uh, second facility in Bangladesh. Um, and it's a great place to be for us because it's close to the waste and close to the manufacturing. For us, this means that we can reduce the impact and the cost of transportation, which is also to the benefit of the brands that want to have a product with the most sustainable uh, performance, of course. Um, so, and we want to scale beyond that. Let's say the plant would, would go to about 20,000 metric tons uh, per year. Um, so we will need uh, a lot of waste. We know that there is a lot of waste, um, but the opportunity is to have a good system where we can access the, the waste that we need and that there is transparency uh, uh, and quality guarantee in that. So that's, that's why we also really support uh, this project. But in addition to that, and also to echo Mostavis, uh, is that we truly believe that the way forward is also beyond post-industrial waste to go to post-consumer waste. And um, we need to echo the fact that this plant in Bangladesh, we would want to also be able to recycle post-consumer waste in the future. And so that the, there is an opportunity to relieve the restrictions on importing that material uh, into the country to really go towards uh, full circularity. Thank you so much, Helena. And that really ties it together. So we're looking at this full circular system. Also, if I think about um, the Honourable Ministers and the President of BGMA's opening speech, how reliant Bangladesh is and how strong an economy it is through the RMG sector. If we move away from this uh, fast fashion that the company, country has grown upon, we need to find out what else would replace that. And maybe it is seeing how can we close the loop from post-industrial waste through post-consumer. I have a small follow-up question for you, Helen, because um, you mentioned being established in Bangladesh as you're close to both the waste streams and the production. And I actually noticed a question on the track on the chat about the carbon footprint and transportation. Does that weigh into your decision? And do you know perhaps what savings you make by being established in the place of waste and that's not shipped? Um, I would say that I don't have the exact LCA data. For us, it is, um, we know that transport contributes. Um, we have seen the climate report, uh, climate action report by McKinsey that did say that in, in their reports, the transportation was not the, 
the, the most significant impact. So we know that in addition to transport, uh, renewable energy, for example, is a very important uh, driver to reduce the climate impact of our products. Um, but it's definitely um, a important aspect as well. So um, I'm sorry, I at the moment cannot yet quantify because uh, the LCA data that we have for our product is actually taking into account from the recycling when it's arriving at our at our doorstep. So this is something that we would like to explore indeed in the future to quantify quantify that. So thank you for that question. Super, and perhaps that's something we can all work on together. Um, handing back over to uh, to you, Monoa. Thank you, Rolly. So uh, I would like to ask a question to uh, Samira Saidi, and uh, she's uh, representing uh, Good Passion Fund. Uh, Good Passion Fund is, I think, a multi uh, multinational uh, financing revenue. Uh, as long as the Bangladesh RNG industry and recycling is concerned, I think one of the major impediments behind implementing a circular passion in Bangladesh that is finance. We don't have enough financing opportunity in Bangladesh. Do we have some? Green finance avenues, but those are also very uh, not very easy to get. The due diligence structures are very different. But I can assume that uh, with uh, days to come, opportunities will be used. So, as an advisor, finance advisor, how do you evaluate the scope and opportunity in Bangladesh to finance circular economy? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Monor. Uh, thank you to the Secular Fashion Partnership for putting the conference together. Uh, quite honored to attend this. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, and assalamu alaikum. Um, so I'm Samira Saidi from the Good Fashion Fund. And as you rightfully see, finance is quite critical um, in the whole ecosystem in circularity. Um, and as the Good Fashion Fund, we've built our value proposition on this, um, seeing the need for funding and uh, trying to fill in um, to meet this need. So in particular with recycling, there's great potential as we've talked about in the conference to the speakers, um, especially now with collaboration and um, the push towards scalability, uh, finance is coming out as a key requirement for um, the, the players in the industry. So we see a lot of requirement as well and a gap to be filled in CapEx financing. Um, mostly because the financial sector in Bangladesh, um, we have quite a, quite a number of players. We have the commercial banks and the government through subsidies. Um, but we see that commercial banks are better placed towards offering working capital financing. And this is what a business would require to meet the day-to-day -day, um, cash needs and to the liquidity needs. And there is a, a gap towards um, who would finance SMEs exactly, because we find that there's a high cost of capital for SMEs who generally att attract higher interest rates because of the risk involved in involving in, in, in financing um, such companies. Um, so there is a gap in the cost, which is quite high from a local financier, as well as there being a gap in USD loans. So you'd find that the equipment whether it's um, recycling equipment or other, would ideally or sometimes be bought in countries where they need to finance it in USD. So they would need USD loans to, for this. Um, and this is where our whole value proposition is based, that we come in to offer USD loans um, at, and at the same time, um, they are at long-term tenures, uh, which would enable the manufacturer to uh, get the value from the equipment they are purchasing and the tenure would meet the payback of the, of the equipment. Um, we also see a great opportunity as well in um, technical guidance. So most manufacturers are indeed interested and keen towards moving towards sustainability, be it recycling or um, making buying equipment that would lead to energy savings, water savings, or in materials. But there is a technical gap where um, most manufacturers would need assistance to understand what's there in the market, what's good for them. Um, and for the Good Fashion Fund, we've been able to partner with the Fashion for Good, who are our sub-advisors. And uh, through this, we are able to guide um, our clients through what equipment is is, is is best suited 
uh, for this. So it is a whole, uh, uh, it, we are financiers at the same time, we are impact financiers. And in this sense, uh, we are able to give the, to, to guide the client world towards sustainability. Um, another quite important uh, opportunity that we see um, is improvement in ESG. So yes, we are financiers, right? And we see what's critical now is to guide um, manufacturers towards improving the environmental, social, and governance um, aspects. And being an impact fund, we are very well placed to do this. Um, through working with technical, to, through working with technical um, companies as well, and the company itself, the manufacturer, we are in a position to establish uh, actionable plan where we say, well, this is where you are, and this is where you're supposed to be, and through our funding, we can guide you and work with you hand in hand to improve this. So these are the opportunities that we see from a finance perspective. Thank you, Samira. I think you have looked into all of the points that should be should addressed. I think uh, I just want to add you one point with this because whenever we think of a linear business that has a different model, but when you think of a circular business that actually have a different model because from the stage of ideation to you know up to a certain level of profit making, it's a different than a linear business because that's not a proven one. That's one point I would like you to work on at the same time. I have seen that most of the scheduled bank and commercial bank that are working in Bangladesh, they yet not taken the sustainability in their mainstreaming. They actually right now, even today, they're looking into as a niche issue, not a main issue. So they always like to you know finance their working capitals and all. So therefore, I think uh, if the literacy of the bankers in the area of sustainability, fashion for good can work on that avenue as well, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Over to Thank you, Holly. So Thank you. I'm loving the, the relay. Um, I have a question for um, the Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for West Europe and European Union. I just want to check um, that he is available to join us. Um, oh, wonderful. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, so having heard a little bit about what um, we're working on within this partnership and also the perspectives from both the manufacturers, brands, recyclers, and um, uh, the investor perspective, we wanted to ask if you see an opportunity for Bangladesh to become a leader in circular fashion, and if you also see this could be linked to creating greater resilience in the time of crisis. Thank you very much. I think uh, our uh, Honorable State Minister kind of uh, answered your first question. I mean, he kind of gave a resounding endorsement uh, to this uh, initiative. Uh, of course, uh, if we could project Bangladesh as kind of a, a lead example uh, in this sector, that would definitely make us happy at the Foreign Office because uh, that can also be used as a uh, branding uh, tool uh, for uh, soft power projection. So from the foreign office, of course, I mean, uh, we would like to be one of the bellwethers uh, for this initiative uh, across our system within the government and, and would very much uh, try to support that. Uh, we have seen that uh, there had been uh, some considerable investment by our manufacturers uh, uh, as regards uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, but I guess uh, when it comes uh, to our policy uh, making processes, uh, it, it generates a bit of frustration that uh, uh, those efforts are not always sufficiently recognized in uh, some of the important international uh, policy making hubs around the world. So the question of uh, incentivizing uh, manufacturers and others who are involved is kind of critical and, and that should also have uh, adequate reflection in uh, policy making approaches. So if circularity is the future and if Bangladesh is to embrace it, uh, for which you have already seen some good early signs uh, uh, at today's event, uh, we would also like to see that uh, those um, initiatives, those approaches are being uh, duly recognized uh, uh, in, in terms of what we can expect as we try to sustain our growth momentum. 
the uh, Honorable State Minister did refer to our LDC graduation, and that would be a critical step that we would be overcoming. And uh, in that process, if circularity has to be factored in, if circularity has to be mainstreamed, then of course, uh, from a policymaker's point of view, it would be critical for us to also understand uh, what awaits us uh, in terms of the responses that we can expect from our uh, international partners uh, uh, as far as their policy responses are, are concerned. And in this regard, of course, uh, through this exercise, uh, eventually, as far as the government is concerned, uh, we would definitely look forward to developing a comprehensive circular economy policy where uh, the idea of uh, fashion would very much be integrated. And uh, that would have to be aligned with uh, relevant international standards. Uh, so, uh, in order to move towards that, uh, we do need to have the building blocks. But there again, as you have all eloquently said, uh, we do need the ownership of uh, the brands, the policymakers, uh, the recyclers. And I think somebody mentioned in the uh, chat box, of course, the ownership among uh, workers. And I wouldn't uh, also forget the managers who are working uh, 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 on the ground uh, in the factories. Uh, so we need to create champions and you have already seen that in Bangladesh we do have champions and uh, if we can uh, disseminate this message across the board uh, then obviously uh, we would see value for uh, its uh, uh, efficacy uh, to, to mitigate uh, crisis response and uh, the more we see such evidence I'm sure there would be more takers across the system uh, for such an approach. Thank you, Director General. And I think um, part of your sentiment, we can also take on to our next panel, where we'll be also talking to the uh, representative of the EU delegation in Bangladesh about how, when we're looking at national approaches, that should be tied into international approaches. So thank you very much um, for that contribution. Um, I'll hand back over to you, Monoa. Thank you, Holly. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Mosina Yasmin, executive member, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, BIDA, under the Prime Minister office. Mohsina ma'am is, a, is, a, is an additional secretary of Bangladesh government and a, a very uh, uh, experienced diplomat. Ma'am, you have, from BIDA, you have been uh, relentlessly working to enhance the ease of doing business in Bangladesh. So as far as the circular business model is concerned, we can see altogether a new era of doing business. And to do that, to grab that opportunity, we actually need a number of policy changes in Bangladesh. And uh, that reform process, I, I think in BIDA can play a huge role too, you know, in this uh, particular, uh, in this regard. So my question is, uh, what, what is your takeaway? How you could, you know, take it forward to enable an environment uh, created for circular business in Bangladesh? Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for asking the question and uh, in, uh, inviting me to this panel, panel discussion. BIDA is working relentlessly for ease of doing business. Um, though we are a coordinating agency, not the uh, implementing agency, we have to work with many different organizations and ministries and div divisions to reform the uh, existing policies or acts for ease of doing business. So the circular fashion uh, agenda is new to us, but not very new. We can work with it and we are, as we are already doing ease of doing business. So I think if it adds to our agenda, we can take it as an agenda and we work it for it. But, uh, but please be note that uh, we have to take with us the Ministry of Industries because they are the uh, uh, regulatory regime for every industry. And for BG, for government industries, Commerce Ministry is the uh, has the largest and uh, highest stake in government industries and also the NBR, the regulatory regime for taxes. So I think if we can work together and we can, uh, if there needs to be uh, reform any policies, any acts or any regulatory tax regimes that we can work together and BIDA will help in 
doing those reforms or making those drafting laws new laws so i th i think i will ensure you so if this agenda comes to us we will uh, coordinate facilitate or assist the uh, agencies working on this and give our inputs and facilitations thank you very much Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, kind direction. You have very eloquently said that Minister of Commerce and also Minister of Industries could, and NBA could be a very good partner. So in this regard, as our President Bijim has also requested, if not for the whole country, at least uh, being the most potential sector, if we can start drafting a policy uh, for the circular economy, especially for the apple industry, that would be great. So we will be... Uh, We'll be looking for your help and if any last word from you. And uh, uh, thank you very much. I will ask, I will request you to give us a proposal where how, what uh, um, policies you need, what reforms you want. If you give us a proposal and we will, we will work on it and uh, send to the uh, uh, sorry, implementing agencies to make a draft a policy. I will have, we can do that. Please come to us with a policy. Uh, proposal or what you want and how to uh, implement this agenda, please come to us with a proposal so that we can work on it and we can coordinate with the relevant ministries and agencies to uh, draft the law, the, draft the policy. Vida is Thank always you, doing that. It is an advocacy agency and we are making many advocacies program for the, the investment uh, development. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring word and also for giving us the proper coordination. We will definitely get back to you with the proposal as you have advised and looking forward to working with you. Thank you, ma'am. And now I would like to hand over to my host, Holly, to end up the session and wrap. Thank you very much. And one of my learnings from today is that we should have made this panel about four times longer because there's so much more that we could talk about. And I'm very grateful for this concrete outcome. Um, over the next few weeks and months, we will be drafting a policy recommendation after further stakeholder dialogue. Uh, we look forward to speaking to more of our panelists and also to our um, audience members. Um, so we can develop this brief and uh, submit it to moreover BIDA by the end of this year. Um, so a great thank you, uh, Monoa. Uh, he and I will stay online for our second panel. And a great thank you to this esteemed panel of um, panelists. And um, I understand the time was short, but that does not mean your contribution was any less valued. And we look forward to continuing to work together with you to uh, meet our mutual objectives. So we will now... Um, continue with our second panel, um, thanking you all and wishing you a great rest of your day and a healthy continuation. And my colleagues will pull up our new screen, introducing our second panel as well. So we um, will now be discussing what are the uh, barriers that we've um, identified in relation to scaling circularity, circularity. We heard from the team at Reverse Resources and at GFA, uh, what re initial results we found, the billions that can be saved by recycling just the post-production waste. We haven't even started to explore what the uh, post-consumer waste opportunities could be, but we've also highlighted several challenges that we feel need to be addressed. So I'd like to introduce our next group of panelists. We have another six esteemed contributors to today's event. Um, I'll start with Jeremy Opratesco. He's the Deputy Head of Delegation and Head of Politics and Trade at the EU Delegation in Bangladesh. We have Mr. Fayaz Rahman, the Director of the ERMI Group, a Manufacturer Representative. Luke Henning, the CFO of CERC Recycling. Maserat Quada, the Regional Stakeholder Engagement and Public Affairs Manager at the H&M Group. Major General Mahmoud Nazrul Islam, the Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Export Processing Zones Authority, BEPSA. And last but definitely not least, Nishat Shahid Shaudri, the Program Manager of the PAC Program within the International Finance Corporation. A great welcome to all of our esteemed uh, panelists. And again, thank you, uh, Monoa, for joining me um, for this second panel today. 
Um, I'll give my colleagues a moment so that they can in welcome all of our panelists. Ah, here we go to the meeting. And I would like to start us with a question again to our manufacturer representative. Um, uh, Ms. Fayaz Rahman, can you share from your perspective what barriers you have faced while perhaps segregating wasteful recycling or planning to scale recycling capacity? And if you have barriers, perhaps you also have solutions in mind that we can help you with or what you need. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, Actually, we started our process, our, our journey with cotton recycling with Reverse Resources, partnership with Reverse Resources about a couple of years ago. As such, for segregating, we haven't faced much challenges. As you know, there are other informal local barriers that we have to go through. We have had hiccups in the, uh, in the process, but we've tried to manage our way across it. So in, uh, there, are, there are some uh, additional costs involved though, in terms of um, space management, as well as human resources, which is required for the segregation. So in this regard, if we look into, um, for a, look for a solution, I think a policy support, which supports incentives for people who are recycling waste would be uh, helpful. Uh, incentivizing and formalizing the structure of as a new revenue avenue for, for the industry. If it's formal, if it's a formalized structure, maybe the informal barriers would be uh, not hampering our process by that much. And uh, also, we had some limitations uh, getting waste out of uh, EPZ. So we tried to get direct export to recyclers. In the future, if we are actually planning, if the, the way things are going, if more recyclers are uh, start setting up locally, then we need some policy support in that regard when waste will be transferred to the recyclers. Uh, uh, currently, I, I believe there is about 15% VAT that we have to pay to move uh, waste out of PPZ. And lastly, I would say the policy uh, reform of waste generation limits. That has been a challenge. I think uh, BGMA is already trying to address this and it's in process. Hopefully this will uh, work out soon. It does, uh, the current uh, policy that's there, it does not actually add up to the actual waste produced. So that's my opinion on the solutions. Hopefully that helps. Thank you very much and very concrete. Perhaps I can hand straight over to you, Monoa, to reflect on the, um, the, the waste limitations um, that Ayaz referenced, and then also for the second question as well. Thank you, Holly, and good afternoon, Masharat Apu. Good to see you after a long time. So H&M is one of the sustainably growing fashion brand, and more importantly, this particular brand is strategically very really important as long as Bangladesh apparel industry is concerned. And uh, we have seen that H&M is also as a brand coming up with pledges in the area of circular economy. So uh, as a practitioner in Bangladesh and also acquainted with sustainability, how, how you see that uh, H&M being able to uh, find out the opportunities uh, does your uh, company also looking into uh, investing or scaling up circular economy in Bangladesh? And how can we actually together get a greater awareness that we have often talked about? Over to you, Mashar. Great. Thanks so much. And thanks for the opportunity to participate today. Um, as you mentioned, we are extremely optimistic about the role uh, that we can play and how, uh, not just the, the role that we can play, but how this whole sector uh, can transform to have a much more positive impact on the environment. We have committed to being climate neutral um, as well as climate positive. By 2030, we aim to be climate neutral. And by 2040, we aim to be climate positive. Uh, in addition to that, we have specific goals 
with regards to circularity. By 2030, again, uh, our goal is to use 100% circular or sustainably sourced material. So this is a really important piece of how we think we can reduce uh, environmental impact in GHG. Um, in Bangladesh, uh, this, of course, as uh, many of you will know, is a very important sourcing market for H&M. It's a strategic market. We've been here for many decades uh, and we plan to be here in the long term. So this is a market we're committed to, not just in terms of our suppliers um, and the factories from whom we source. We realize that actually a lot of the challenges that are faced are at a larger <laughs> level um, and at the policy level, especially when it comes to topics like circularity. Um, so there's two or three things that we're doing. Um, one is within our supply chain. We're really trying to drive improvements. We have partnered with uh, the Global Fashion Agenda. Before that, we had partnered with Reverse Resources. We're trying to really drive improvements uh, at the factory level so that our suppliers are, are segregating their waste properly. That waste can then be transferred on to recyclers and stay within uh, our circular production system. In addition to that, what we'd really like to do is take the learning that we're getting at a factory level to influence what's happening at a larger level with both stakeholders as well as with uh, policy uh, partners. Um, I think the point that was made in the previous session about needing to put in place a comprehensive circular economy policy was absolutely spot on. Um, because at this point, we basically, this is very new for Bangladesh. Um, and what we have to understand is how to make changes in a sustainable and scalable way. Um, another point that resonated from the first session was that actually recycling has to be as competitive of, as virgin resources. So it's around fixing the whole system. I don't think we can fix one particular small bit of it. What needs to be looked at is the whole comprehensive system of stakeholders and um, how to make this work so that uh, it can happen, you know, the changes can be sustainable. So our work is within our supply chain and then also trying to influence uh, policies and working with stakeholders to create an impact at a, at a sectoral level. Thank you, Masharat Apu, for your eloquent presentation and very well described, I would say. I have just another question to you. When you were thinking of uh, having 100% sustainably sourced material by 2030, I think you have also uh, looked into the possible investment or any kind of incentivizing mechanism for the manufacturers to do so. Yes, uh, and sorry, that also just remind me that I didn't respond to your question around financing um, and whether we're looking at financing. Um, so yes, we have in place a supplier relationship management system, which includes a sustainability index where we track on a regular basis, the GHG emissions per product, the better. So that's one of the indicators that we're looking at. Um, our sustainability index is 50% based on social indicators where we look at um, kind of a number of systems, as well as wages and gender and, you know, all the things that are really important to us. On the environmental side, we're looking at GHG per product, we're looking at water and we're looking at chemical. So the better our suppliers do in terms of reducing the GHG per product, the higher they score in the sustainability index, which means the higher, uh, the better they perform uh, in our <clears throat> supplier relationship management system and the more business we do with them. So that's really the system that we have in place. I'm sure that the manufacturer will really uh, find it, uh, you know, interesting for them and also making a stride in the area of uh, uh, circular economy and also making a stride to closing the loop. Thank you. Handing over to Holly. Thank you, Monoa. Thank you, Masharat, as well. Um, and, and really wonderful to hear how you are incentivizing these improvements. Um, so we have, as we talked about earlier today, that we are fostering these collaborations between brands, manufacturers, and recyclers. We've heard manufacturer and brand perspective. I'd now like to loop you in a loop as a recycler. 
Um, can you share um, what barriers you're facing, if you're facing barriers, maybe it's not, maybe it's all smooth sailing, um, and how you are looking to scale recycling capacity and what solutions you perhaps may need? And thank you very much. I think the key thing for, and I, I speak for myself, but I think all recyclers are facing this challenge in a way is this need for scale because, you know, the volume of waste and the need to deal with it is, is the biggest issue. So in terms of scale, I think where some of the barriers have been overcome in the recent past, you know, one of the things that the recyclers needed to do was to be able to demonstrate the feasibility of their processes. And that's been happening a lot more with pilots with the work that uh, Fashion for Good's been doing, with the work that you guys are doing, because that sourcing of materials is a key component to the feasibility of uh, recycling. The other big thing, you know, and barrier that was there was actually access to capital because when rolling out new industrial processes, there's often a lot of resistance in the beginning. And I think that has seen quite a strong shift as well. What we're seeing now in the market is more acceptance of the need to supply capital to, you know, to deploy these products and these projects. And we are definitely seeing an impetus there. I mean, most of the chemical recyclers you know, only uh, were only able to really successfully, you know, do their first major round of funding two years ago in a lot of ways because brands, funds were not actually, you know, investing really aggressively in the space. So I would say that the access to capital is probably the, the biggest barrier that a lot of the, that a lot of the recyclers have been facing. And then the other thing is, as you start to build these facilities, you know, friendly on the ground policies and, uh, you know, places that are fertile ground for you to actually put down facilities will be a key next step and a key decision maker for recyclers in where they put their, you know, second, third, facility. So I think that would be very key. Thank you, Luke. So really friendly on the ground policies, access to capital and access to materials to scale really coming together, what I hear. Um, I'm handing back over to uh, Monoa to um, ask the following question. Thank you, Holly. Uh, now it's my pleasure to uh, ask a question to Nisha Tapu. So Nishat Apu is actually uh, the manager of the PACT program. PACT has been one of the most successful, successful projects in Bangladesh RMG industry have ever implemented. And it has started with cleaner production, then it looks into water security, water footprint, chemical management, and whatnot. One of the major component of the PACT project is component three, which is basically policy reform. And uh, we have done some excellent work together with PACT uh, through our textile sustainability platform. So with your experience, uh, Nishata, can you please explain that uh, what do you find that the policy should be addressed to you know, popularize or make more available circular economy in Bangladesh from your experience and uh, uh, from your perspective? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Monoar. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer uh, for inviting me and very honored. And this is a very timely discussion. And um, what needs to be done, if you say, uh, uh, I think this is uh, very important that we need to have a sector specific dialogue platform that, uh, that we already have developed and it's called textile sustainability uh, platform. Uh, uh, the co-chair is BGMEA and it is managed by BUILD. And uh, uh, this platform basically, uh, it's a public private uh, platform uh, and where the stakeholder collectively generates the information and identify, identify issues and develop evidence-based uh, recommendation uh, to support advocacy to the relevant government counterparts. 
And uh, now, it, you know, it, to stay competitive in the market, especially in the global market, the transition to circular fashion is one of the important thing. And um, and uh, I echo with Luke and also most uh, most of his by uh, mentioning about uh, need uh, need for scale. This is uh, this is very very important. Right now, the discussion is about uh, pre. Uh, product, uh, production, uh, uh, you know, the waste, uh, we also post consumer waste need, we need to also think about. And, uh, uh, and also want to mention that Bangladesh government is in, uh, in process of developing uh, EPR, that is extended producer responsibility guideline that is very, very important for uh, post consumer waste. And now it is the time uh, to really, really uh, think about to include uh, textile in this uh, in this uh, guideline and uh, there um, and let me share a couple of experience uh, especially for packets it's, it's almost like uh, uh, IFC we are engaged with the, uh, this uh, industry for many years like from starting from 20, 2010 and uh, it took us long time to raise awareness raising awareness is very very important and educating the you know the industry and as well as demonstration project is very much important and we do have you know uh, uh, reg uh, uh, strategies in place, a strategy in place, especially the three-hour strategy, which is in place. And, um, and what needs to be done, we need national guideline, pre and post uh, uh, consumer waste, national guideline, roadmap, and an action plan. These are three things that is needed. And, um, and why PACT is very successful? Because we, we, we were able to uh, have some champions in the project. They were doing, uh, they were ahead of everyone. And these, uh, these champions were uh, spreading the words and uh, our approach and the benefits, especially the financial and environmental benefit. So you, you also need champions, you need demonstration project and also technologies, technology suppliers, uh, low cost uh, technology suppliers, multiple uh, tested technology options should be in the market. And uh, just to mention that packed by this program, we have also established a uh, textile technology business center in place where by they generate knowledge about uh, best practices and also do business to business linkages with, uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the industry. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha Kapu. You have uh, correctly pointed out about uh, uh, requirement of a national guideline. So can you expect that the TSP would uh, take it forward, maybe? Uh, uh, Munar, uh, uh, many of the stakeholders who are present, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, we have started, uh, TSP is in place, as well as we are also parallelly running another uh, uh, dialogue uh, uh, that is on post-COVID uh, recovery of RMG sector. So uh, through this discussion, there were three areas identified uh, to, to help the sector to recover. These three areas were um, access to finance, sustainability, and diversification. So we have uh, already completed a discussion on uh, diversification, which focused on, sec uh, on market, sector and product diversification that's uh, done and and the recommendations are in place and uh, we have handed it over second one is access to finance which we are right now we have uh, the discussion in uh, uh, in uh, uh, may and we hope to finish that uh, dialogue uh, by uh, end of june and the next will be sustainability and under the sustainability uh, discussion we can definitely talk about this uh, uh, the, the, uh, especially on the pre and uh, pre and post uh, if if you are if you consider that pre and post uh, uh, post uh, uh, ma waste management of uh, textile waste. Thank you, Nisha Tapu, for your commitment and also leadership in this particular domain. So we'll be looking forward to work with you. Now I would like to hand over to my colleague, Holly, to take over the session. Thank you, Monora, and thank you, Nisha. I feel that we're getting, even just in these conversations to get today, getting a clearer direction of what we need to move this work forward. And um, we have great respect for the achievements of PAC, so we'll definitely be following your advice there. 
Um, so we have two more panelists that we'd like to hear from, and I thank you both for your patience. Um, I, I would like to ask the next question to you, Jeremy, um, and that is, we've been talking a lot about the national circularity approaches, but perhaps you also heard in the previous panel, there's notion to how this is interconnected with uh, international work and the work of the European Commission. Um, as the representative of the EU delegation in Bangladesh, can you share um, anything about the work, perhaps on the EU textile strategy, um, what's happening on circularity and how you see that tying into the work that may need to happen in Bangladesh as well? Thank you very much, uh, Holly, and thank you very much, Manor, for first of all, for this very uh, uh, interesting uh, discussion we are having this afternoon. Uh, many takeaways for uh, for, for us uh, as you uh, from this panel, but as well from the previous uh, uh, panel, uh, that of course this discussion uh, cannot be exhausted today, uh, especially because it's a constantly evol evolving uh, uh, topic. You mentioned our uh, sustainable textile strategy. Uh, uh, yes, when it's come to the EU, this this, uh, this uh, strategy uh, uh, needs to be still further discussed because it has to be finalized. It's not final yet, uh, and this gives me the, uh, the occasion uh, to invite you all to participate at this uh, uh, strategy because we are now at the point of the public consultation. So everyone can participate to this uh, uh, EU strategy by contributing uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a website. We will of course share with you the precise details of this uh, website. So, uh, but first of all, please, please let me come back to your precise question uh, on, the, on the importance of the synergy between <clears throat> the EU and Bangladesh on the, on the circularity. First of all, why is that important? Uh, this is very important, obviously, because uh, <clears throat> sorry, because uh, Bangladesh is you uh, more most important uh, trading partner. Um, as you know, more than fifty percent of Bangladeshi exports uh, are towards the European Union, and in two thousand nineteen, um, uh, more than twenty billion euros of uh, textile have been imported in uh, in Europe. We believe that uh, our EBA system, which is the most possible. Uh, a generous uh, trading scheme has a lot contributed to the uh, to the development of Bangladesh RMG uh, uh, sector, and now we think that the Green Deal you've certainly heard about the, the, the Green Deal after the EBA will open a new, a new chapter in uh, uh, in these uh, relations, and this will be we hope this will be an asset as well for, for Bangladesh uh, RMG uh, uh, sector. Second, uh, uh, when it comes to transition to circular economy, we think that Europe acts as a kind of uh, 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 trailblazer and uh, that Europe is leading the way towards a more circular uh, uh, value chain. Uh, I mentioned already the, 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 the Green Deal and under this Green Deal, the EU, has, the EU has committed to climate neutrality by 2050. Uh, we are often asked, what is exactly the, 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 the Green Deal? It sounds like a, like, like, like a big word. What I can first say, what we generally say, is that uh, what uh, the Green Deal uh, isn't. So that the Green Deal is not a, 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 an environment policy or a climate policy. It's much more than that. Uh, uh, it is a, a policy for the whole economic model. It is mainly a more circular uh, uh, economic uh, uh, model and their action in, in this uh, respect, uh, uh, which are there to transform the EU industry as a whole, from agriculture and energy to transport and construction. In this framework of the Green Deal, the European Commission proposed a new circular economy plan, action plan in March 2020. And in, in this, sorry for another framework, in, in this framework, uh, the EU has proposed the EU sustainable textile strategy that you mentioned, uh, uh, Holly, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just before, and the aim of this strategy is to incorporate circularity and sustainability in all stages of textile and garment value chains. That's uh, exactly our topic. However, the, the, this, uh, the sustainable textile strategy will be adopted only at the end of the year, at the end of uh, 2021, probably uh, during the third quarter uh, of, uh, of the year. But from what we, we have seen in the Circular Economy Action Plan, we have some indication in what can be in this uh, uh, sustainable uh, uh, textile strategy. 
one of the measures will probably be a new sustainable product framework uh, uh, that includes eco design requ requirements for textile products. I cannot give very specific uh, details on that because, as I said, this uh, this uh, strategy is uh, is uh, ongoing. Uh, we we are drafting it, but this can be labels, for example, which are indicating to the final consumer in which precise factory the item has been produced and if the item is uh, is recyclable. Uh, this uh, uh, framework, uh, 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 yeah, this this strategy uh, also include. Uh, uh, can include requirements for producers to contribute towards the recycling and treatment uh, of the textile waste. And then it could as well incorporate, and this is bring us back to, uh, to what uh, DG Fayaz uh, was, uh, was uh, mentioning before. Uh, it can incorporate as well an external di dimension, such as waste, waste exports restrictions and circular economy ob objective in free trade agreements or in any kind of, uh, of uh, 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 preferential ta tax uh, schemes. So that's when, 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 when we talk about what Europe is doing. And then uh, uh, last, la last point I would like to mention, uh, what, what is the way forward and how are we interacting with, with Bangladesh on this, uh, uh, on this topic? Uh, of course, uh, we are following very closely uh, uh, what Bangladesh is, is doing uh, in, uh, uh, from this regard. And uh, uh, of course, we would like to suggest, first of all, to Bangladeshi suppliers in the textile industry to familiarize themselves with the new European Green Deal, with the Circular Economy Action Plan, and of course, with the forthcoming uh, EU Sustainable Textile Strategy. We are, uh, uh, we are very much aware, uh, uh, again, uh, for quoting uh, what uh, Digit Fayaz uh, just said, uh, with, uh, what, uh, that the, with the fact that the Bangladesh textile industry is quite ahead of many uh, other textile producing countries in terms of greening uh, uh, factory. And our uh, impression uh, is that most of the companies share a positive attitude here towards moving to a more environment friendly circular uh, production system. And, and last, uh, before concluding, uh, I just want to, to, to mention a, a small group we, we, we just uh, created recently in the context of our EU Bangladesh uh, Business Climate Dialogue. Uh, this group is called uh, Green Business Practices, in which we are discussing with the government of Bangladesh all these uh, uh, all these topics. This discussion is led on the Bangladeshi side by the Commerce uh, uh, Ministry, uh, and we have uh, as well participants from the EU uh, uh, private sector. And the leader uh, among the EU private sector on this topic is one of the panelists today. Uh, Masharat, just give me the occasion to say hello to, 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 to Masharat. And we are working very, uh, very intensively with the government of Bangladesh on all, all, all this uh, 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 topic. And, and we try to, uh, to share on all the information about the upcoming uh, legislation and uh, how to uh, uh, advise the, the Bangladeshi private sector, how to keep competitive competitiveness uh, uh, in the context of this new green, green deal and uh, uh, in the context of our uh, new upcoming strategies. Sorry for having been very long. Uh, uh, over to you, Holly. Thank you so much. And I, I just hear that there are a lot of opportunities for, for us to engage. And I also see that there are quite a few questions coming in on the chat as well. Also, thank you for your contribution. Um, so out of time constraints, I will um, hand over to Monoa to um, ask our final panelist the question, but thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. It's very helpful to understand. Thank you, Holly. With this, we are at the end of our panel discussion. We have our last speaker of the session, uh, and uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Major General Mohammed Nusr Islam, he's the Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority, BEBSA. Under BEBSA, we have, in Bangladesh, we have eight EPZs, and uh, BEBSA has been successful to introduce formal and planned industrialization in Bangladesh. Sir, my question to you is, what possibilities do you see for BEBSA to help the manufacturers, especially the apple manufacturers in Bangladesh under your uh, economic zones to implement circular economy within their business? Thank you very much. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, you are, are, sir. Okay. Yes, you are. Thank you so much. Yes, you uh, are. Fantastic. Now, I am very grateful to, 
to be uh, here and uh, give a lot of thanks to the uh, inviting authority. Uh, probably I am the right man here now, I feel, because it is my area where I have a lot of things to do. Just to the, uh, the, my first point, if I have noticed very clearly, the policy barriers in Bangladesh, one slide, it shows that the export processing zone limitations on selling waste materials in local market, if I am not wrong. I think this statement was there in the slide. I humbly differ on this point first, because this EPZ has no restrictions to sell the waste products outside the EPZ premises. Uh, so with that uh, uh, connotations or the point, uh, I just like to uh, bring to your notice that uh, BEBJA, in short, Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority, is the, one of the very strongest element in investment promotion uh, affairs or the areas. It contributes 20% of the total country's export, a huge amount. Now, coming down to the very specific agenda of navigating the challenges on this today's topic, you'll be very happy to note that uh, even today, I have one company of the Chinese company located in the Mongol EPZ, Monor might be knowing it. They are on this circular uh, economy issue. And as the statistic goes, their growth percentage is almost 79% on this issue by utilizing this circular uh, motion or the circular economy utilizing the modern technology. I have very specific um, uh, propositions in this regard. Before that, yeah, I'll be very happy in echoing uh, with the voice of Mr. Fayaz, the Director General of the Foreign Ministry. As you know that I'm also the part of the government and working under the um, direct supervision of one of our Prime Minister. I am also responsible to carry the points up to that office and in echoing with the um, State Minister of Foreign Affairs. Bangladesh government is absolutely prepared, ready, and very happy to embrace the new technology the fourth industrial revolution. I'm also a member of that uh, national body. So uh, let us to be very um, confident and clear that with the appropriate uh, projections and discussions, uh, I think uh, we can make the hurdles liquidated and can move further. My specific propositions on this, you know, that uh, uh, whatever the uh, method we adopt, we must consider that the national will find its own interest in this sector, absolute collaboration is required. What is that collaboration means? I have uh, four or five points on that. I think absolutely a research-based proposal to be given, highlighting the issues like the stakeholders. You know that the waste, centering the waste issues, there are a lot of industries directly and indirectly have grown up. They are, they are earning their bread from out of that. So the research must address all the stakeholders, the linkage of economic circularity that keeps those people tied up into the knot. And then funding the alternatives to rearrange the surplus workers, how they will find their jobs. If we are putting the new industry, new technology in force in the name of circularity, how, what will be the disposal of those people? So the research must get into those issues first. This is my first point. Second point is the modalities of migration from linear to the circular. Will it be too fast? Will it be too slow? What is the, uh, what is the capacity of a country like Bangladesh? What is the uh, people behind it who will get it done? So the modalities should come to the second issues, the migration modalities in, in accordance with the technology at hand and the, and the operating capability of the country that we'll be using, particularly in Bangladesh. But uh, I, I assure you, uh, the EPZ is quite capable to handle and, uh, and take all the, all the issues together. Third point is a financial assistance from our partners. It, it, it was discussed deliberately. Uh, my very specific um, concern is the scope, systems, conditions. Uh, it has to be very clearly defined so that the recipient then can grasp it and can implement it on the issues of the financial assistance from the developing partners or the partners, those who are associated with their business. Third is the training of the workers. The man behind the gun is very important. I, I was educating myself for last few days on the circular motion because uh, uh, it is a very fantastic area to be uh, uh, to be within. Uh, so I feel that uh, you know, we have to 
train our forces. As you know that uh, we are enjoying the um, uh, uh, population dividend, but yet to really uh, grasp the full technological skill. We are uh, yet to be very, very proficient on this use of this machine. So here the uh, training part comes in. You have also discussed the sensitization of the entrepreneurs, consumers. Yes, uh, a comprehensive plan has to be there. But with regards to Birja, as I am representing this organization, as the Bangladeshi uh, people those who are connected here, they very well know that it is easy to be implemented here within this economic zone because things are very transparent, very systematically. Probably if I'm offered or given the technological and all other financial or other assistance, I will be able to uh, take the flag in the front and show uh, as a footprint in this field. Uh, then uh, sixth point is the uh, unilateral agreement or the partnership policy. The win-win situation or what will be the apportionment of the benefits, who will get what. This has to be the bottom line of, of, the, of the interest based policy that is unilateral agreement between all stakeholders. And my last point is the technology transfer. Uh, the technology, whether the very, very sophisticated technology, could it be placed here? Is it the appropriate time or we should take the middle on and should, should go on? So um, that uh, has been my points to navigate the challenges uh, for scaling the cir circularity in the fashion industry or the industries that we are talking about. Thank you very much. Uh, if anything needs to be clarified. Thank you very much, Major General. And I, I appreciate having a clear overview of the points that we can work on and the opportunity to continue working together. Um, to further scale circularity and do it in an inclusive way that distributes value across all the actors, includes workers, includes upskilling. So very relevant points that you're sharing with, with us and thank you again. Um, so I am afraid that we are at time. So we will have to end this panel and transition to our closing remarks. A great thank you again to all of our revered panelists and to my co-host Monoa. We um, know you have so much more to share with us on these topics and hope in the near future that we have the occasion to continue these conversations um, with you. And um, so thank you again. And my colleagues will now be transitioning us over to our final slides and our closing remarks. Um, and so for that, I would like to introduce our last but very not least speaker of the day. Thank you also for your patience as we uh, go through today's program. Um, we would like to introduce Shwapna Bomik, who is the head of country at Marks and Spencer's Bangladesh office for her closing remarks. And I'll just give a moment. Ah, oh, there you are. Welcome Shwapna. Thank you very much. Just give me one sec. Of course. Can you hear me now? Perfectly. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I also wanted to say that you know, I'm really, truly humbled and honored that you made me a part of it. Uh, I think uh, as we can see as individuals, as company, and as government as nations, I think we are navigating an unknown path. And very interestingly, what we have seen that in our earlier days, the challenges that we have actually faced, uh, now we are turning them to you know, opportunities. And we have seen that the leaders uh, in different organizations and nations, they're just coming together and bringing those brilliant ideas, how we can scale up and, uh, you know, uh, say not only just safeguard and bring innovations to the situations or the unknown path that we are actually facing. Now, hearing in the sessions um, and the panels, I think three things definitely came up. Uh, obviously, uh, the collaboration, uh, innovation, and uh, scaling up. So in terms of the collaboration, I think uh, if we have heard uh, the, the honorable state minister, the, he was very, very clear about the collaboration he's talking about and the support that he is talking about and uh, bringing all the brands together, connecting all the dots is going to be one of the key things to making it a success, uh, no doubt about it. And I think we can see a sheer, uh, 
commitment and positivity from every corner is just because uh, this is the industry and this is the area that is going to probably, you know, uh, keep the whole industry going. I mean, if you look at every sector of Bangladesh, actually just literally depends on garment industry. So I think there is a sheer commitment that we can, we can actually see. So bringing all of them together is going to be one of the key factors uh, for the success. And then the second thing is innovation. Uh, we have to innovate with these ideas that came up from every corner. And then how can we communicate that with each other is going to be one of the critical things, uh, probably to make it you know, a sustainable and a successful uh, process for the future. And then scaling up that end-to-end -end comprehensive scaling up process uh, is going to be another critical area uh, that we need to work on. Now, very interestingly, what I wanted to say is that uh, change is not easy and it's never easy. And I'll give you a very, very different example of uh, this change, uh, which will, I'll connect that with circulator later. Uh, as you know, in, in Mars and Spencer, we have got this our plan a commitment and we definitely always, not only just wanted to Bangladesh business successful, also wanted to make sure that you know, we make a huge difference for the community and the lives of the people. And one of the projects and one of the work that we started in the year of 2007, uh, bringing disabled people and making them part of uh, the mainstream labor force. And when we started that, uh, the challenges and uh, I wouldn't say negativity, I'll just put as challenges that we have faced uh, from different uh, you know, corners. Uh, how can we make sure that uh, they are able to come out? How can we make sure that we can actually train them? And then uh, the major question from the manufacturers is that uh, what's in it for us and how can we actually make them uh, part of this mainstream labor force. And when we were trying to connect the dots, uh, that's one of the things that you know, I, I was discussing that how do we connect the dots? Uh, when we were having this whole conversations with the manufacturers, uh, the local government there, and then the CRP, the, the organization that we wanted to train those disabled workers, what we have understood that when you bring all of them together and try and communicate uh, the benefit and what's in it for you, uh, and just not from, uh, you know, in a sympathetic point of view, rather than just how can you make them a complete mainstream force, because it's about 10% of the total population is actually, you know, physically challenged. And then we have seen that uh, when we can completely train them and, uh, appoint them in the factories, okay? Uh, when they have seen that they can actually be even, you know, better workers uh, than the regular workers because their absenteeism is not there and they are way more efficient than the regular one. We have actually showed that to the industry that they can be way more efficient after the training and with the support that the manufacturers have provided, uh, you know, getting them to the factory, making sure that they have got that system, ecosystem for them to commute. We are able to now, if, I mean, employ uh, with the support of the manufacturers, about 3000 disabled, you know, people under the mainstream workers. And while I was, while we, we became the part of this um, circular fashion partnership, we were, thinking that, you know, how can we make it a success as well with the partnership that we have with you? And that we were taking back all the learnings that we have actually, you know, uh, taken and the things that we have learned delivering that absolute fantastic, um, you know, 3000 disabled workers coming to a mainstream workforce. And when we were talking with the manufacturers, we knew it's going to be a success because uh, I think in Bangladesh, the way we have adopted, we have got this uh, huge forward thinking uh, manufacturers where 
we have actually showed the example that we can actually lead by the example. I think the Honorable State Minister have mentioned that, that, you know, and then BGMA President have mentioned that as well, that we have got this example of bringing the green concept, okay, uh, bringing the highest number of uh, facilities and absolutely starting, starting from the scratch. Uh, and we knew that when you can bring everybody on the table, when you can bring or make that supportive ecosystem, you can actually make this one as a success as well. And this one is, this, this circularity is going to be a great success because the learning that we had from this previous work that we have done, uh, again, the same thing, the same challenges when we were facing making that whole denim sustainable, uh, bringing those machineries, you know, eliminating those paper spray, making sure how do we consume less water. And those learnings actually came hand in hand. Uh, and then while, as I say, just connecting all those dots and connect, bringing the right partners uh, is the key. And then when we were talking about, when we did this proud partnership and talking with the manufacturers, we faced the same set of challenges and questions as well that, uh, you know, what's in it for us? And then the local system that we have in place, uh, how, uh, how sustainable this is going to be. And then when you kind of like try and understand the scale of opportunities that you have, because with this current scenario that we are, we are facing, cost is going to be one of the biggest challenges that we are facing, the manufacturers will face, the retailers will face, uh, the government will face. And while they have understood that this is the way forward, okay, this is the future, because if we do not make it sustainable and we do not bring this ecosystem overall, uh, this industry is not going to be sustainable. But as I said, uh, in Bangladesh, we have got the right mindset, and the forward thinking manufacturers, the supportive government, and we have seen the commitment from different sectors that they want to make it success because this is the way forward and we want to make this industry uh, sustainable and end to end. Uh, circularity is going to be one of the key things that we have to address and take those learnings. And this platform could be a fantastic platform for knowledge sharing as well, because one of the things that commonly doesn't happen that, you know, we have got our different best practices uh, in different organizations and in, in, in different platforms, but we do not share those knowledge and we do not come across probably sharing very well about those best practices that we have, you know, in place and making a difference. But I think, you know, global fashion agenda could be a great platform to bring all of this, all of this connection and communicate with each other and share those best, best practices. So I think the next steps are going to be very critical. The next steps are going to be immensely critical that you come up with this policy recommendations, connecting those dots and bringing everybody, the brands, the manufacturers, the retailers in that platform where we do talk about the progress that we have so far made and then the future that how we are going to actually, you know, scale it up to different organizations. Even, even when I was talking to, you know, the foreign chamber of commerce the other day, where, you know, 200 organizations uh, with, you know, different industries are there. And as I said, this, this can be a role model for the other industries where we can take these learnings and make it a complete end-to-end -end process where everybody can actually, you know, get the benefit out of it and make it a complete ecosystem where everybody can see the benefits and make a better future for not only the industry, the nation, and for the livelihood. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Swapna. I think that was a perfect way to end today's event. And really we do have all of the actors and all of the elements and it's about collaboration. And I especially appreciate your notes on knowledge sharing as well. So thank you very much for um, joining us for this meeting and for your um, powerful closing remarks. 
just rest me with a, a few last practicalities for all of our audience uh, members. And that's really to thank you all for joining us for this event. Um, it's really a kickoff of our policy engagement. So we look forward to speaking to more stakeholders over the next weeks and months. So we can really deepen our understanding and create a recommendation for approaching policy reform so we can look at how we can attract investment and really scale this capacity and make a Bangladesh a front runner here. Um, so this meeting has been recorded and will be made available afterwards. You can learn more about the Circular Fashion Partnership on globalfashionagenda.com. And if you have any questions that weren't answered today, um, please feel free to reach out to uh, me and my colleagues at CFP at globalfashionagenda.com. So on behalf of the CFP team, and all of our representative organizations, we want to extend our sincere thanks for joining us today and we look forward to working together in the near future.